Hey, welcome back. So last time we left our project with just a text and we wanted to include the data from now on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my data on my computer and copy it in the data folder. So now I have my data there. What I want to do is to read it inside the stream with project. And it's basically like when you're working on a Jupyter notebook, it's very simple. Of course, I need to import pandas. This is PD. And I'm going to say here, maybe not on in the header, but more in the data set section. Uh, taxi data D dot read CSV. That's the name of my file, taxi data. And just to show the data set and make sure that it's loaded, what I can do is to say the right taxi data head first. I remember it just showed the first five. I forgot to type the folder name. Now it should be fine. Okay, now I can see the first five entries in my data set. So, but I don't really want to see it as a table, right? I want to be able to show a visualization. So one thing we can do, for example, is I can calculate the uh, values of occurrence of any certain column and display it there. So for example, one thing we can do is, uh, let's see, what do we have? Uh, we have the pickup location ID. Okay. So I want to show how many times from which location a passenger was picked up. So what I'm going to do is, um, location distribution. And I think this is not a data frame anymore. So I'm going to cast it into a data frame. Okay, so now I have the distribution. All I have to do is say streamlet bar chart um, view location distribution. And this should be it. And there you go. We have a very, very big uh, location distribution. <laughs> Uh, plot. So what I can do is to, I mean, this is a pretty big data set. So I'm just going to say, show me the first, I don't know, 50 of them. Okay. That's better. So now I can see, uh, my plot. You can add a title to this plot. So let's do that. So what we can do is here, we can say streamlet subheader this time. Um, pickup location ID distribution on the data set. Okay, so now I have this, I can go here and see, okay, now I have a nice little title for my uh, plot. So this is not the only way you can build a plot. You can also use some other things like Plotly uh, to display plots in your streamlet. But you know, just for the sake of this practice, we're just trying to get something going. So let's not go into super details. The next thing that I want to show you is how to make a list. So, you know, if you created a new feature for on top of your data set and you want to be able to show this, what you can do is to say, SC markdown. Uh, if you don't know what markdown is, it's basically a way to create rich text. So you can make things bold, you can make things italic, you can create lists, for example. So what we're going to do is just to say, this is how you make a list. And I'm going to bold the name of my features. I'm going to say my first feature that I created and explain I created this feature because of this. I calculated it using this logic. And another one, we can have the second feature again here, and then you can have a lo as long a list of as long of a list as you like. And then let me see how that looks. And yeah, now you can have a list of your features. You can edit it as you like because it's marked down. And the last thing that I want to do in this video is to create the user input sections. What we wanted to use is the slider. We also wanted to use the drop-down menu and we also wanted to use a text input from the user. So 
let's uh, implement those. But before implementing those, there's actually one other thing that we have to think about, and that's the columns. So we created the containers already in this video, uh, in the previous video, but how do we call it, create the columns? And it's super, super, super simple. So when you're inside the model training container, uh, all you have to do is to say this. I want to create two columns. First one will be called the selection column. The second one will be called the display column. And what I'm going to say is streamlet beta columns and the number of columns that I want. So it could be more than two, but I mean, I think for display purposes, probably two is already uh, good enough. Three would be too much. And that's all. Now I have two columns. <laughs> and from now on, when I want to assign something in these columns, instead of saying ST, I will be using their names and things will be assigned to their respective columns. So let's do that. First, we want to create the uh, slider. So how do we create the slider? So I'm going to say put it in the selection column. And what I want is a slider, as easy as that. The title of the slider will be, you will be asking the user, what should be the max depth of the model? That's all. And after that, what you want to give it is the range of the slider, of course. So we have the minimum value. I'm going to say it should be 10. We have the maximum value. I'm going to say it should be 100 for now. And the default value when your um, app runs for the first time is the value. So I'm going to say it should be 20 and step is 10. So they cannot increase the value from 10 to 11 to 12 but they can jump from 10, 20, 30, 40, for example. So, okay, this is the first thing. And okay, but how do I get what the user told me? So if you've ever done some web development, you see this always very complicated trying to get uh, input from the user. But with this, it's extremely simple. All you have to say is whatever the user chooses, save it in this variable called max depth. So it's pretty simple. So let's see how it looks like now. And yeah, look at that. We have a nice slider here. We're not really using it to do anything, but yeah, as you can see here in this little part, when I change this, it says the app is running. So it's it's running the whole app again. Let's do the other inputs. Uh, so the next input that I want to have is about the number of estimators. So I'm going to say estimators. Uh, I'll put it in the selection column again. And the drop down menu is called a select box. And I'm giving an option. And the options are basically the um, an array. You can have whatever you want. You can say 300, or you can even say something like no limit, because you know Python doesn't really care if that, that you should always have integers or floats or strings on your list. So I can just write it as that. And then I'm going to say index is zero. What it means is the default value should be the first element or the zeroth. So the first element of uh, the list, that's all. Um, and before we go ahead with that, let's also do our last input too. And that's going to be the input feature. I want to get the input feature from the user. And I'm again going to say selection column, input feature is text input. So I'm just imagining this model as like a very simple one feature and one feature out sort of uh, algorithm. Uh, okay. And all I have to do here is to, because this is a free text input, all I have to do here is to uh, select the default one and I'm going to say PU location ID should be the default one. Okay, let's save it and see what it looks like. Look at that. We have a nice question. They can select whatever they want. We have a nice another question. Again, they can select whatever they want. And here is something where they can write anything they want. And they only have to, as, as said here, press enter. And yeah, now our app runs. So in the next section, I will show you how to bring in some uh, machine learning model in here and calculate and display the performance of the model. 
Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a like and even maybe subscribe because I'm more or less here every week and trying to bring you the content about becoming a data scientist. And don't forget to also go check out my website. So you want to be a data scientist.com. There I share weekly articles. I have a podcast where I interview other data scientists and data professionals, and I have free and paid resources. I have courses on data science, both for understanding where you want to go with data science and also getting practical hands-on experience on data science. I mean, that's actually the name of my course, hands-on data science. So go and check those out and I'll see you around.